I just finished watching all 10 episodes of My Adventures with Superman. And frankly, I could take more adventures with Superman. Take that, Gundam. That's right, I am the man you may know as Z from My Reviews Will Kill You, and I am I have a bone to pick because I watched My Adventures with Superman, and frankly, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good, and I'm going to go back a little bit in the Wayback Machine to pick on It's a Gundam a little bit. And I think his videos are humorous. I love his dog, Fluffy. He seems like a great YouTuber. I don't specific, you know, most of the time he's on the mark, but I think I'm making a bigger point here about reviewers who review things too early and don't give anything a chance. If you know anything about the professional reviewers, including like all of the ones that you see on Rotten Tomatoes who are bribed and paid off and all those other things, they're all given advanced screenings and they're all given somewhere between two to four episodes ahead of time so that they get a head start on everybody. And then what happens is they give their initial review and they never finish anything. So what we tend to do here at Our Reviews Will Kill You is watch the entire thing and then give you our honest feedback. And it's a gun to review two episodes. I review, I watched all of them. I did shorts on every single one of them. And I already gave a full-length review on our podcast that you can catch anytime that you'd like. So what I'm here to say is I'm, I'm here to go back in the Wayback Machine and, and we're going to take a look at a little bit of what It's a Gundam had to say and, and review it. Take a look at what he had to say, break it down, and, you know, why I think it's wrong. And look, if you don't like something, you know, you get two episodes in and you don't want to finish it, that's okay. But then it just reminds me, like, don't finish the review. You don't have to make a review if you don't like something. I did that with the latest Adam Sandler movie. It's, uh, what is it? It's called, uh, uh, You're So Not Invited to My Bar Mitzvah. I made it 20 minutes in, and I realized this movie is not really for me. I didn't laugh a lot at it. A lot of people really enjoy it. Not made for me. And I know you're trying to fight the good culture war battle, but I don't think it's okay to make a fight if you didn't watch the entire thing. There's a lot of people condemning stuff that they haven't watched. Now, if you're anything like some of the other channels like Reaper, where you watch and break down, or uh, Dispro, where you break down every single episode and you have criticisms of it, I think that's fair. I just think it's a Gundam kind of jumped the gun here and is reviewing something that he didn't spend any time reviewing. So it makes things a little more challenging. But let's hear what he has to say from his own mouth because I don't, I don't want to take anything away from him and don't get me wrong his videos are great and hilarious so the first two episodes as nicely as possible because what i want to say would get me banned off of this platform the character this oh feel free to subscribe to it's a gun i think he's a great channel i'm just picking a point with people in general who are reviewing things i can't tell you how many reviewers are out there who say like i just i couldn't bring myself to watch it then don't talk about it. Just say, like, look, I, I just I have no desire to watch it. But you can't call yourself a reviewer if you're not going to watch it. You got to at least give it a chance, you know, and then give the reasons why you don't want to finish the show, which he does, but at least make it to the end or, or something to make a final judgment. Don't just condemn it before it even finishes or starts. So you're like 40 minutes into a 10-episode run. This shows what you get when people who lack creativity attempt to copy the successful formula of anime, but with none of the love or even the good story beats, or clearly a budget. Superman slash Clark Kent talks to himself like a character from a Tumblr fanfiction. Do not crush his hand. Hey Clark! Help me! Ah, today just be normal. Today just be extraordinary. Okay, I had to save the cat. I had to save the cat. I'm a normal man having a normal day starting now he's kind of gay <laughs> it's not gay come on i don't know i don't know man he's kind of gay to me also superman shows up to the daily planet not knowing who he is so he's like having this emotional existential crisis throughout the first episode that was absolutely annoying why am i doing this so and look there's gonna be spoilers for this 
this sets up the story, and it's and it's a gum's gonna pick a fight with the fact that it doesn't follow the traditional Superman beats, and this doesn't. But I find it to be better in some cases. Some of the episodes are in fact more interesting with some of the characters than you may have seen in the past, and specifically Mister Mixaplex or whatever the hell his name is actually had a good story arc and something interesting to say this time as opposed to being this like cheese ball character from like the 1950s and i'm not saying it's being updated for modern audiences what i'm saying is, is it's a different take clark does not know who he is yet so uh so when he goes and he goes to the ship with his parents he doesn't speak kryptonian so he can't understand what they're saying to him so it causes confusion, and he never really finds out who he is. There is no um, Fortress of Solitude for him to learn exactly who he is. So he does doubt who he is. He's a lot of self-doubt, and he wants to be normal. And I think that's a different approach, and I'm okay with that. Who am I? Who am I? Because we need his help. See, that's called payoff and setup, you know, where they set up that he doesn't know who he is, and then they pay it off by the end of the series, where it's actually kind of tragic what's going on with Clark. So it's a different animal and actually makes his humanity a different take. It's it's interesting. I like it. I'll take it, you know? Don't you want to know who that person is? It's such a stupid take on Superman, in my personal opinion. By the time he went to the city to join the Daily Planet, I can't remember right now, I'm tired. He already knew who he was and what he was capable of. He yeah, if I wanted to read the 1950s comic, I would read the 1950s comic. I'm okay with people doing a slightly different version of Superman. It's okay. Trust me. It's fine. Set out to help people as Superman by the time he went to work there. But now, it's self-discovery, Superman. Every five seconds, who am I? What am I? <laughs> Lois Lane is no longer a woman who has her power in her femininity with razor-sharp wit and keen observational skills. Oh, <laughs> hi. I don't, I, in this point, I don't necessarily agree with, and I'll just show a little bit of this, but Lois in this one uses her, I guess, feminine wiles to like do stuff. In the show that you're seeing, uh, in My Adventures with Superman, she's an intern. So she hasn't been there that long, and Superman is an intern. So Lois has been an intern for one year and is trying to become a reporter, whereas Clark is literally there on his first day and doesn't really know what's going on and is not a seasoned Nobel Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. You, you, you're you getting a different story. It's okay. Hello. Clark Kent from Smallville. Smallville? Never heard of it. Have you ever been to Kansas? God, no. We're not Smallville. getting a 30 something year old like Lois Lane. You want to keep up with me? You got to be. Lois Lane now has short hair and dresses like Elliot Page. And? I mean, she does, but I still think she's cool. And guess what? There's still the relationship between Lois and Clark, it's still there. She didn't transition or anything. So she also has all the emotional maturity of a preteen. Yes, she is not mature because she's an intern who is insecure and does not have a full time job and needs money and wants to impress her boss and wants to get the story so that she can have a job. It's called ambition and being driven. It's okay. Except she's in her twenties. She now feels more like a self-insert character than the Lois Lane we've all known our entire lives. For God's sakes, the character is flushed out. She's like 100 years old. Jimmy Olsen's now black. Damn. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. that already happened in Supergirl. So I, you're, they're late to the party. What are you going to do? Because of course he is. Hollywood's relentless erasure of redheads knows no end. It is, that Ginger is true. lives matter. Thank you might say Gundam. <laughs> it's a kid show. And I would agree originally. Yes, I thought the same thing until I noticed that My Adventures with Superman is on Cartoon Network at midnight. It's correct. That is correct and also a good point. Does not seem to be a kid show. I mean, there's nothing to be like, oh, kids can't watch this, but why is it on at midnight? I don't think five-year-olds are supposed to be up at midnight watching Cartoon Agreed. Network. 
The real irony here is that the Superman animated series from the 90s was indeed a kid's show, but it treated you like you were mature enough to handle adult themes in Superman. Nice ass. Excuse me? Right here. Strong, fly, <laughs> what a great S. fantasy ideal all wrapped up in a red cape. News Ken. The president broke diplomatic ties with Kaz. Swim show that feels as generic as a Saturday morning cartoon show aired at midnight for, I guess, teens and people in their early 20s that are still trying to figure out who the hell they are. I don't know. I think people could easily mistake this for this is the Velma of DC and Superman. It's not because Superman, while he's not all powerful, is still pretty darn powerful and like needs to learn what his limits are, which he doesn't know. He doesn't know anything about himself again. So here's the final spoiler just to kind of put this all in context. So he doesn't know who he is because what eventually he finds out is that the Kryptonians were actually conquerors that were looking to conquer earth. That's why task force, Task Force X is after him. And Task Force X doesn't know what to do with him, so they try to find these people with advanced tech so they could stop him, which they've deconstructed from a previous failed invasion from the Kryptonians. And then the entire thing ends with, I'm assuming, General Zod being uh, finally aware that there's a Kryptonian on Earth and that the planet has not been conquered as it was supposed to be. So he has to stop his conquerors, which makes him at odds with his own heritage, which I thought was kind of interesting. He's He still is the symbol of hope that we're looking for, and he's still... He, why? He's willing to take punishment for the people. He gets his clocks cleaned several times. I just... I thought it was... I like the different take. I like Parasite was different. Parasite wasn't just like an alien. He had this kind of like Tony Stark. It was like a parody of Tony Stark, but he had the suit that drove him insane as opposed to being Iron Man. He wasn't just a ripoff of Iron Man. It was a, a satiric take on it. Just like I said with uh, Mr. Misaplex, Mixaplex, whatever the hell. I thought that was an interesting take on alternate dimensions because it ties into the story because... Lois is concerned as to whether or not she wants to be with Clark as Superman because he is, she sees him in an alternate future where he destroys the Earth several times. So she's concerned, which happens. DC set all this up themselves. It's not our fault that we didn't write the stories. So again, I liked it. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. I'm not just picking on It's a Gundam. I'm just saying, hey, didn't like any of the villains either. I thought it was an interesting take. While, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of wokeness dropped in there, but you can't burn, you know, what do you, what's the, you can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You can't burn the whole thing down. We have to learn, like, hey, if you, if some people like this, let's come together and say we like this interpretation. If he didn't like it, it's okay. I'm okay with that too. He makes a really funny, good video about it. So check out his video. I'll link it in here somewhere. And uh, maybe I'll link it up here. Let me know in the comments below. Watch our video. Watch his video. Tell us, did I make the right points? Am I right about this? I recommend you watch it. It's definitely worth your time if you're a Superman fan at all. I think you'll get a kick out of it. I think they're, you know, Lois is just as plucky, and uh, she was kind of annoying in both cartoons, and she was kind of annoying in this, but she learns a lesson in this, so I thought that was interesting, and Jimmy's kind of funny. It's all good. I like it. Let me know what you think down below. In the meantime, check out our full-length audio podcast iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, for free to you. Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come and check out our podcast. We'd love to have you part of it because it's a good time party. But as for myself, I am on to the next one.